I had the pleasure of interviewing my friend Dr. Charlene Dukes at Henderson Creek, a historic bed and breakfast venue in Prince George's County on a lovely Thursday afternoon. We had a delightful conversation and chatted about Dr. Dukes' childhood and growing up in Pennsylvania. We talked about the formative years. Well, I was born in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, uh, a place that I always associate with three major floods. And I tell folks all the time, if you don't know Johnstown in any other way, you'll know the Johnstown flood that I grew up in a four room house, not four bedrooms, four rooms, mm -hmm. a living room, a kitchen, two bedrooms. It was nine of us. And my parents had one room and whoever was the youngest had a crib in that room until they became of age. And that was generally around three and they would move into the room with the rest of us. Until I went to college, I had never slept in a bed alone. And I remember saying that it took me six months to realize that when I rolled over, I was only gonna hit the wall. <laughs> I went to undergraduate at Indiana University of Pennsylvania, so I have a bachelor's degree in secondary education with a concentration in English. And then all of my graduate work was done at the University of Pittsburgh. But I actually wanted to be a school teacher. I love to read. I love um, grammar and, and sentence structure and punctuation. And I remember when I was meeting with my advisor, he was talking to me about all of these creative writing courses. And I said, I don't want to do that. When I teach, I want to teach grammar. And he said, we don't teach that here. We expected that you came knowing that. I actually never taught full time outside of, um, you know, that sort of teaching experience you get as part of your degree. But I hope that I've been able to bring it to my role in higher education because I actually worked in higher education for 42 years. And most people are unaware. I actually left college after my first year. I went to a predominantly white institution. And I will say it was not the most pleasant experience mm -hmm. uh, being from Western Pennsylvania and around people who did not understand nor sought to understand people of color. So after the first year I left, I moved to New Jersey. I worked for Bell Telephone. So that tells you how long ago that was. And I worked for Chase Manhattan Bank, actually worked in the World Trade Center Tower One. And then my boss said to me, the only reason I was hired was because I had one year of college. And within 90 days, I had re-enrolled at my undergraduate institution. You know, there are times when I think about, had I just stuck out those four years, where would I be having another three years of work experience under my belt? Where would I have been had I really spoke out in ways that would have the opportunity to make a difference at that institution with regard to this group of 200 students of color, Black predominantly, mm -hmm. who went on to a predominantly white campus and they weren't expecting us. What, did the, what would that have meant had I had the opportunity to be there in such a way to make a difference, especially as we think about what's going on across this country today? You know, I think about, would I have been someplace else? So I think there are all those things that go through your mind, but I also believe that I ended up where God wanted me to be. Early education, her redirection and revelation. Well, I actually worked at the Community College of Allegheny County in Pittsburgh. And I was a assistant director of admissions, director of admissions, director of admissions and financial aid. Every time someone left, I seemed mm -hmm. to get a new responsibility. And I even tell people today that, you know, for me in my career, I always wanted to do what people ask me to do for two reasons. Would it make things better for who we were serving? And quite frankly, would it add to my set of skills and experiences? So unless it was unethical, illegal, or immoral, you could ask me to do it and it was likely I would say yes. The journey, experiences, and opportunities beginning to take shape and taking the plunge.
you know, the, I think the great thing about the experience is that I had already been at the college for 12 years as a member of the senior administration of vice president, uh, Ron Williams, who was the president that I worked for immediately prior to uh, uh, accepting the position as president, was very gracious in his um, mentoring and coaching and advising for me as I talked to him about my desires to be a college president. He actually, for a time, uh, sort of said, okay, then when I'm not here, you'll be in charge. So I'm going to give you the experience by having you do it. That was a great way for me to learn, uh, to learn that I needed to listen to people mm -hmm. <laughs> and that I didn't always have the answer, that there are lots of smart people who work across the college and that I needed to listen and learn and understand what collaboration meant. So I ended up here on a, a fluke. We were going through some reorganization at the community college, and there was a, um, a, a rumor that went around that maybe they were going to do away with some of the student services. And that's the area where I worked and where my heart was. And I said, it was a recession. And I said, oh my gosh, if they're going to do away with services that support students, this is not a place where I can be. And I saw a position. I put my application in and actually talked with Alonia Sharp, someone who you know at a yes, career fair yes. at Pennsylvania Black Conference on Higher Education. Yes. And that's how I got to Prince George's <laughs> County with Alonia Sharps and the first president I worked for, Dr. Robert Bickford. Right, right. When I stepped up as the, the first woman president, um, I was proud, I was elated. Uh, it was something that I could go home to my parents um, they were just so happy because they didn't have the chance to pursue post-secondary education. And they told us that no matter what happened, they wanted to ensure that their nine children would have lives that were better than theirs. And um, I was proud that I could do that before my dad passed away. Woman to woman words of wisdom. For young women, I always say, be confident in who you are. Look at people who you admire and say, what is it about those women who you admire that makes you think that, you know what, maybe I can do that someday. You know, we were always told, and, and you may recall this, that dress for the position you want, not mm -hmm. the position that you have. Mm -hmm. So if you see people that you admire, understand the reasons why and look at them not just intellectually, but physically as well, you know, because people are watching you all the time and you want to be sure that they see the best of you. Moving forward and family motto. Oh, you know, folks talk to me about that a lot. When I was, uh, when I announced that I was going to retire, they would say to me, well, you haven't been here that long. And I said, oh, I've been here 25 years. And then we're going to add the 17 years before I worked at other higher education institutions. And I, what I hope is that people will say, whenever we called her, she responded. Whenever we called, she responded. That she was willing to step up and step in. Um, and that um, she didn't ask for anything in return. She just said, I want to be a good community member here in Prince George's County. And I, it was something that I, you know, my folks said, I will tell you, we used to, my parents would stand in the doorway of that four room house as we were um, getting ready for bed. And my dad, mom would stand in the doorway and he said, okay, let's all recite the Lord's prayer. This is what we did every night. Our father who art in heaven. And then he would say, what is the family motto? And the family motto, was one for all and all for one. And that's what we live by. That's how I grew up. And that's the kind of attitude I've tried to take to every community that I've been in. It's the kind of attitude that I try to take to my, to my work. When my dad passed away, all of his grandchildren had tattooed. Now I was a little nervous about it, but they all had tattooed somewhere on their arm, you know, their wrist, um, one for all and all for one. So it is, it is just the way that we grew up. And I think that the way you grow up is the way that you live your life. Women are the backbone, sisters, 
friends. I think that if I could, I'd really like to have an intimate conversation with Michelle Obama. Because to understand, you know, I've watched a few documentaries uh, about her, you know, particularly as they focused on her when, um, when uh, President Obama made the decision to run. And, um, you know, how she talked about how it impacted their family, but how she had to grow in herself around certain things and realizing that they would be the first couple for all of the people. And then how she blossomed in that role yeah, over time. Absolutely. But what did that mean relative to any kind of sacrifices that she had to make personally for herself as a woman? And how can that story help other women in, in our lives? So I think that that would be and the, one. And then you know what I'd like to do? is to figure out how we as, as sister friends in this work, you know, I think about you, Dorothy Bailey, um, B. Tignor, mm -hmm. you know, I could name uh, Aretha Bridgewater Sims, women whom I've, whom I've looked up to the entire time that I've been here in Prince George's County and just said, wow, if I could be like them, that would be more than enough for me. You know, I think about, of course, Arta Samser Cowan, mm -hmm. Shawnee's Washington, Absolutely. Betty Hewlett, you know, we could, Rosie Allen Herring, Reverend Dr. Gwen Boyd, we could go on and on. The, yeah. And, and um, Jackie Woody, you know, yeah. just people that you know and you say, wow, I didn't know that about them. Didn't, you know, never had the time to really connect the way that we wanted to in some cases, but in other cases, connected cerebrally so quickly because we understand the work that we are committed to do and what it means that, that women are the backbone of so many things. And we do it with grace and style and commitment and courage and strength. And how do we impart that to young women who are coming up and still trying to find their way? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to be with you.